Hello! Very excitingly, I have just finished all of the work I have to do for today and I have a couple of hours before an event I'm going out to this evening. So I have some lovely relaxing reading time in front of me and I also have a stack of about a dozen new books which have just been published here in the UK in March to choose from. And don't you just love this moment of having reading time in front of you and a stack of books and picking what you're going to read next. So I'm going to discuss why I'm so interested in all of these books. Some of them publishers kindly sent me and others I went out and bought myself because I'm so eager to read them. But I'd love to hear from you which of these books you would want to read first, which you're interested in reading, or if you have any new books that you're eager to get to. Also, this video is very kindly sponsored by Serious Readers, and I'll talk more about them in a few moments. First up is the novel Headshot by Rita Bowinkle. I first heard about this book through my friend Anna James when we made our Women's Prize predictions video, and she talked about this. It didn't end up making the cut for the fiction long list, but it does sound really intriguing. It's the story of eight teenage female boxers in America, and it follows them over the course of a two-day competition during which they go head-to-head -head with each other. So we get each of their backstories as well as their confrontations with each other on the mat um, during this competition and that just sounds like such a good premise and also I, I do have this like interest um, in the sport of boxing even though I don't care about sports all that much but Joyce Carol Oates has written a book called On Boxing which is so fascinating looking at the the history um, mainly of like African Americans um, throughout um, the history of this sport. Um, but yeah, I'm just really intrigued to see what the author does with this. And also it's endorsed by uh, the author C. Pam Jane, whose um, most recent novel I talked about in a video a couple months ago. And she says, extraordinary with prose as muscular and gleaming as a body in motion, Bowinkle drops readers into that roaring incandescent universe that is young womanhood. Until August by the great Gabriel Garcia Marquez, who died a decade ago. And as it says on the cover, this is the lost novel because this was his final completed manuscript. It's the story of a woman who's happily married and seemingly has a very content life. Uh, but every year she goes on holiday and takes a new lover. So it's exploring love and desire and freedom and regret and a lot of these big topics. Now, as I understand it, the story behind this is that when Marquez completed it, um, he thought it wasn't his best work and that he thought it should be destroyed. But his sons kept a copy of it and now it's finally been published and translated into English. And is it just a money-making scheme by them uh, or is it a great piece of work of, of literature um, by such a masterful author because uh, Mark has has been so influential and especially like in my personal reading life 100 years of solitude was i think the first like fully adult novel that i ever read and it really inspired me on my reading journey so i'm so curious to see what it's like even if it isn't his best effort uh, but it's really exciting that we have now finally another new book by him. The Great Divide by Cristina Henriquez. This is a historical novel about the construction of the Panama Canal. So it's set around the early 1900s, but it's told um, through the lives of a number of laborers who worked on the construction of this big architectural feat, um, but also doctors and a number of other people and how their lives intersected with each other um, during this time. The Kellerby Code by Johnny Sweet. Uh, this is a novel about a young man who ingratiates himself in the lives of a number of people who are much more well off than he is. And uh, he does this by doing uh, many favors for them. Um, but then um, jealousy sets in and it becomes a thriller. And uh, Emma Stonex um, describes this book as Tom Ripley meets the Winch Elm in this creepy, acerbic, darkly funny thriller about loneliness, ambition, and the lengths we go to to escape ourselves. 
And I just think that sounds so intriguing. And also the author, Johnny Sweet, um, wrote the screenplay um, for a recently released film called Wicked Little Letters, um, which is such a pleasure to watch. Um, go watch this film um, if you haven't already. I was lucky enough to go to uh, the premiere of it um, with Bob the Booker and a couple friends of mine. And so that was just so wonderful. At one point, Olivia Coleman was standing behind me. Very exciting. I wasn't very enough to ask for a selfie with her or for her autograph but um yeah that was really cool such a wonderful movie and so yeah i'm so intrigued by this story as i mentioned in the beginning this video is very kindly sponsored by serious readers a company that creates high quality reading lights for indoor use like this one this is my high definition table light that i've been using for a very long time now it's become a trusted companion especially because recently i've had some issues sleeping through the night and I found it's helpful to get up to read until I feel tired again. This illuminates the pages of my book brilliantly because if I were to use the overhead light it would be way too harsh and bright and I wouldn't be able to get back to sleep again but the light from this lamp feels warm and natural and I can direct it right on the book so the rest of the room stays dim. So if you're looking for an excellent new reading light, I'd really recommend Serious Readers. I'll put a link to their website in the description below so you can check them out. And if you decide to buy one, I have a special offer for you. Be sure to enter the offer code SR518 because this will save you £100 on a high definition light and give you free shipping. And now, back to the books. Girl in the Making by Anna Fitzgerald. As you can probably guess, this is the coming of age tale about a girl uh, growing up in the suburbs of Dublin in the 70s and 80s. Uh, she's um, a very quiet and self-contained girl, but things aren't okay in her home and she's brave enough to speak up about it. So it's about the, the consequences of that and um, looking at the society at that time. And of course, um, this month there's an Irish readathon going on. Um, so I do want to read more Irish books. Memory Peace by Lisa Ko. This is about three idealistic friends who meet in the 1980s and they all have their areas of special concern in that one is a performance artist, one is a coder in this fledgling time of the internet and one is a community activist and they're all very ambitious about changing the world but it's about how they become disillusioned over time um, and over the decades um, but also about their interactions with each other and their long-term friendship. I think it even goes into the future and so following like large-scale um, social changes um, but also the lives of these friends. Sympatia by Rodrigo Hugo Blanco Calderon. This is a novel from Venezuela about a man whose wife has just left him, but also he's just been left uh, by his father-in-law who's died, a mansion, um, but it comes with a condition that he has to turn this to a home for dogs um, that don't have a home. Um, so it's following his journey and um, his ambition to complete this um, so that he can fully inherit um, this estate. Um, but it's also about the changing politics in Venezuela at the time. And so um, this was uh, just published about a week ago. And it's also just been long listed for the International Booker Prize. And it's one of the books on the list that I'm most interested in reading. It Lasts Forever and Then It's Over by Anne DeMarkin. Uh, this is an advanced copy of this quite um, short book. Um, so the final finished cover of course, because it's published by Fitzcarraldo is Solid Blue. And this sounds like such an intriguing story following a woman in the afterlife as she's traveling west with a crow in her chest and she's gradually losing pieces of herself and her identity and what connects her to humanity. But she's also discovering all these strange and wondrous things in the afterlife. It's kind of giving me um, Seven Moons of Mali El Mida um, vibes. And uh, that just makes me really eager to, to read it. Also, it comes with an endorsement by Jeff Vandermeer, who says, It Lasts Forever is sad, shocking, funny, prophetic, visceral, and deeply human. 
from amid the dislocations, the lacerations, a profound meditation arises. Next, I have a debut poetry collection called After You Were, I Am by Camille Ralphs. And this is playing upon history and figures of the past and art forms from the past like prayer books and poetry. Um, so uh, it's kind of giving like a new version on these uh, events of like Elizabethan drama and witch trials from the, the 1600s to resurrect and give a new interpretation of these figures and documents from the past. And I just think that sounds so intriguing. Next, I have a couple of newly republished memoirs, which sound so moving. And first there is Blue Remembered Hills by the historical novel novelist Rosemary Sutcliffe and this was first published in the early 1980s but it's just been republished by a uh, handheld press and um, so it's exploring uh, this author's life of growing up in Devon and this seemingly idyllic setting um, but how um, she was beset by very serious illness but also exploring how um, her mother had very serious mental health issues. So it's a coming of age tale but also an exploration of her first loves and the inspiration behind her novels. Love's Work by Gillian Rose. This was first published in 1995. When Gillian Rose was 46 years old, she was diagnosed with cancer and she died when she was 48. So during that time, she wrote this book, which is a philosophical memoir exploring childhood and friendship and love and loss and mortality and it's meant to be stunningly beautiful. Sunken Lands by Gareth E. Rees. This is a nonfiction book. I'm looking at a number of locations that are now underwater um, from the Stone Ages to more recent times of these places which have become submerged and what this says about our culture and about our environment. Um, I read uh, this author's most recent short story collection called Terminal Zones, which was also really concerned about the environment, but was so unique. And um, so I'm really eager to read more of his like nonfiction about this subject matter. The Rising Down by Alexandra Harris and as it says on the cover this is about lives in a Sussex landscape because when the author moved back to her childhood homeland of West Sussex she realized she didn't really understand or know anything about uh, her the, this landscape of her youth so she started to research it um, through archives but also through ordinary objects and she relates that story throughout this nonfiction book um, which is looking at the lives of some literary figures like Ford Maddox Ford and William Blake, um, but also the lives of a number of ordinary people and how they intersect with each other over time. And I heard this author speak about this book at an event recently, and she talked about it so passionately and so in such a fascinating way that I'm really intrigued by it. And finally, this is very, very, very geeky of me. I have Star Trek Discovering the Series by Tom Tom Selinsky, and this is looking at all episodes of the TV series of Star Trek that have ever been. And when I was a teenager, I was really into Star Trek The Next Generation. And I saw just recently um, that on uh, one of uh, the online subscription platforms, all of the Next Generation series is there. So as kind of like a, a treat for myself at, at some points when I, I don't feel like reading, I want to go back and rewatch some of these episodes. And uh, this book gives summaries of um, every episode that there was, but it also gives um, star ratings for it. So I'll be able to go through and pick and choose which episodes I want to watch that are the best. I'm using this as kind of a guide. Um, so those are all of the books. I want to talk about. Like I said, um, let me know which you think I should read first, what you're curious about reading, or if you have any other new books that you're looking forward to reading. But I hope you're doing well and reading good things and have some reading time for yourself. And I will speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.